Welcome to a brand new series. This series, I'm building a tiny cabin off-grid in the woods. Episode 1 Where it all began What does this place spark in your imagination? What do you think of when you look at this tiny cabin? It's taken me a year since last winter when I first discovered this place to dream up and start working on this project. And now, here we are. I can't wait to turn this little kid's playhouse into the most adorable tiny cabin in the woods, off-grid, and completely self-reliant. Can you picture yourself here, waking up and looking out the second floor window to all the beautiful trees outside, feeling the warmth of the fireplace below, and the whisper of the trees outside, maybe the dollop of the occasional snowfall? Or in spring, the flowers outside have started blooming and the forest is alive with birdsong, the celebration of all the creatures who've made it through the chilly months, melding like liquid vibrations with the raindrops on the roof above your cosy bed. Such a different shot with a different camera. My name is Flossie and this is Siren Step Van, my tiny home on wheels. I built this van conversion myself and this series begins our adventures of converting this rundown, rodent infested, sketchy kids playhouse into the most dreamy of all off-grid tiny house cabins. I am excited to take all the skills I started learning in the van conversion and build on them, get better, improve, make art, and learn more as I take on this little building. It's a good skeleton, a frame for all my hopes and dreams of a tiny cabin in the woods to come true. I have to start with a little deconstruction, and my hope is that it might be somewhat livable before the snows of winter return this year. But that, indeed, is yet another ambitious goal. I hope you will join me, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe so that you get notified when the rest of these tiny cabin build videos come out. They will come out intermittently between other step van adventure videos with me and Siren. Hello everybody! Welcome to the tiny cabin. Um, I'm excited for this video to introduce you to this building which is kind of falling apart and needs a lot of TLC. I feel very lucky to 
be expanding the places that I can call home um, and expanding my skills and experience in building and construction too. This is probably originally been constructed as a kid's playhouse and I'm going to make it into an off-grid cabin hopefully with off-grid water, off-grid power, uh, cooking, uh, and a, like a beautiful place to come f retreat to if I'm done with moving around a whole ton and I just need to come to the middle of the forest and pause to stop to rest like what a beautiful spot to do it in um, but to make it habitable all year round in winter and to be able to feed myself be comfortable it needs a lot of work um, it is more barely more than just a little bit of a shell very breezy very it's not airtight at all and the foundations need a lot of work so the foundation is where I'm starting before we start looking at um, how I'm gonna design it what things I'm looking to do inside of it I'm looking to put heating inside of it with a wood fire stove a cubic mini like I have in the step van I'm very excited about that uh, there's a loft bedroom up here um, and and I want to move this back wall to be in line with this here so we're going to actually make the indoor square footage bigger and I'm excited about that um, I will probably have some help from a kind expert um, a friend who is a, a retired um, carpenter or carpentry business owner and has offered to help me with some of this so I'm really excited and can you see it is warm enough out here for a sleeveless number these have to come out that has to come out this bench has to come out and then this is going to be my workshop I am going to set this shed up just next to the cabin so that I have somewhere dry to build stuff, somewhere to set up a work table and some saw horses. Today I have to take out all of this wiring. I'm going to use some of this wiring in the step van because I'm sure the wire is still good, but it's just run all over the place. They've done a very inefficient job in its way it is wired. So I want to get it all out of here. This is the problem area. This piece is sketchy. And definitely at this side is being pressed down by the weight of this whole wall here. So when we take it out, we need to make sure that this is equally as stable as that and maybe even replace this with better flooring, especially after I take all of this delightful, ugly tiling up that has got to go.
I am going to use some of this wiring in the step van. It is good wire, it is a decent gauge. Um, because there's no point leaving it in here because we have no idea where we want the switches and the sockets until the design is no done. And until I've done the design, there's no point leaving this wiring in because it would all be in the wrong place. I want to insulate and vapor barrier and put building paper and get this really well sealed up from the elements before I even think about electricity. And then the electricity will go in before the walls go on, the, the siding on the inside. So, a lot of shit to be done. We're going to get there. But I may as well use this stuff in the meantime and then we can get the correct gauge because ideally most of this will be 12 volt. And this wire is probably a little heavy for 12 volt wiring. So, wish me luck while I pull the rest of this shit down. I might have reached as far as I can get. I came to release the wire, but you can't see it anywhere. This is all tongue and groove and it's all nailed in. So I'm gonna have to take this walling off, which I mean, I have to anyway, because this goes straight to outside, but I can't even access where the wire is behind here. And it comes up here like in four places. Why would somebody need four sockets up here? Like, you would need a circuit for lights and a circuit for powering your devices. But anyway, this is the upstairs. It is pretty cute. Windows on both sides. One of my jobs is to work out how to place is freaking haunted. Ha! Ah! Work out how to do double glazing myself because this is just what I would call perspex or um, sheet plastic. It's very thin. This whole thing is not a proper window. Over here we have proper windows at the base and then sheet plastic up here. So it's just a heat escape and there's like so drafty. So I've got to figure out a way of sealing this kind of window up and making it really uh really good for winter and then yes these giant holes between each of the rafters is good but the frame of this cabin looks great it looks like i don't need to do anything more up here as far as structural other than blocking and insulating but yes all this wall was definitely gonna have to come down because the electrical wire goes up in there and he's probably fence post tied it in here, which I need to get out. So I might have a go at taking some of this down right now. Okay, so where's the wiring? This is not proper vapor barrier. It's not sealed. You need to use the um, stuff that I used in my step van so that there's actually no moisture or air ingress. Oh yeah, and there's been mice and rats in there. got to be dealt with with gloves and mask. Exposed wires. They're all touching. You expect the socket not to fucking short out? It's a fire danger. And look at all that gross. Okay. And this is the one that I can possibly get down.
here we are I have a decent amount of wire that I'm gonna use in the step van I am doing and probably you might have seen it by now that when this video comes out doing the electrical off-grid system with my lithium batteries and preparing for DC to DC charger and solar and I needed a whole lot of wiring so here we are we have it thanks to this little gem yay Go with the flow, be thoughtful of those downstream, slow down and meander, be clear, follow the path of least resistance for rapid success, immerse yourself in nature, trickling streams, roaring waterfalls, sparkles of light dancing on water, delight in life's adventures around every bend. Let difficulties stream away. Live simply and gracefully in your own true nature, moving, flowing, allowing, serene and on course. Rough waters become smooth if you find yourself babbling. Just smile, go around obstacles, stay current. The beauty is in the journey. This is all advice from a river. If I had a candle, I'd light it just for you, so that you could see my heart is always there for you. If I had a million, they'd light the way, so that you'd always know that you're never alone, and we're always here for you. All of our candles together can light the flame of hope, of getting rid of stigma, so we can all better cope. Perhaps someday soon, others will understand. Instead of running away from us, they'll gladly hold our hands. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It is going to be an absolute adventure. I don't know what the rebuild of this cabin is going to look like or how long it's going to take, but I'm excited to do it. And hopefully by winter, so we're going to do this all over summer, by winter it will be nice and cozy and we'll better sit out here and stay, look out at the snow and the stars and have fires. It's going to be beautiful look out of the river but I have a lot of really hard work ahead of me so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure YouTube actually notifies you when I do another video in this series I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one bye